Hi everybody, Josh Griffin here. Thanks for joining me for another video training session from Download Youth Ministry. It's designed to help you become an even more effective youth worker. Now you're already investing time and energy in students' lives, and my goal is in the next few minutes is to offer you some words of wisdom today to help you in your journey as a leader. Thank you for your commitment and your dedication to teenagers. Now, I love watching sports on TV. I realize not everyone is a sports fan, and I'm sorry, and I'll pray for you. Uh, I realize I might even be a little extreme. Let me give you an example. Just yesterday, I was channel surfing between an NFL game, an NBA replay from the last night before, and NASCAR. And that's while I was watching fantasy sports on my iPad, too. Well, if it isn't obvious, I'm that guy who gets a, a little way too into sports on television. In fact, my firstborn kid would come in with like a lawn dart in his back asking if I would take him to the emergency room, and I'm craning my neck around him going, just a second, buddy, quiet. There's only two minutes left in the game. Just shake it off. Now, I love all sports, but I especially enjoy watching really talented NFL quarterbacks. At that high of a level, quarterbacking, it isn't just about throwing the ball. It's about knowing what the other team is going to do before he throws the ball. Now, a great quarterback can step up to the line of scrimmage, look at how the other team is set up, and anticipate the potential weakness in the defense. They're able to bark out an audible, change the planned play to take advantage of that assumed weakness. Now, of course, the defense can do the exact same thing and surprise the offense. They might even employ a blitz and force the quarterback to dump the ball off quicker than expected. But a smart quarterback who's prepared well, still has an advantage before the play even happens. Well, here's the connection to youth ministry. I think in some ways, being a good youth worker is a lot like being a good quarterback. We step up to do our jobs with teenagers, and we aren't exactly sure what's going to happen, but you know, sometimes a giant linebacker-sized problem catches us off guard and levels us. Have you ever felt that way? Now, even if this whole sports analogy is lost on you, you can relate to the idea of getting blindsided by a problem or you know, youth ministry drama that crops up. What I want you to hear is that we need to be as prepared as possible ahead of time so we're ready to take on the inevitable unexpected problems that will try to tackle us. Reflect for a few minutes on these scenarios. Have you ever had one of those moments, an unexpected run-in with a student? Maybe it's at Starbucks or in a restaurant or you catch them TPing your house in the middle of the night. Um, each moment that we interact with students is a potential God moment. We never know when these random encounters could actually be a divine appointment from God. These moments in youth ministry sometimes require simple discernment, and other times they require more serious discernment. Well, simple discernment says this, just don't pass up the opportunity to value this person. Your meeting isn't by chance, so greet the student in some physical way. I'm a big fan of the hug, the high five, the fist pound. The Bible says greet each other with a holy kiss, but I'd shy away from that if you're working with students. That's another training for another time. But any way that you can make a student feel loved and quickly discern how to respond in a kind, affirming way, a look, a touch, a word, for sure, look that student in the eye and smile with some great nonverbal communication. You know, a touch is where I extend a hand or give them a hug or a high five, just something basic. And a word, maybe even something brief, like, it was great to run into you today. Just seeing you today makes my day. With those simple moments, simple discernment, you can react with a look, a touch, or a word. But not all divine appointments are so simple. Some unexpected but great youth ministry moments are serious, and they require a deeper response from us as youth workers. For example, you run into a student and you say something as simple as, how's it going? And then he goes deep on you. And you're expecting, fine, thanks for asking. And he grabs a Starbucks and is on his way. But instead, he answers, well, my dad is having an affair, my mom is deeply depressed, our family's breaking apart, my grades stink and I'm having suicidal thoughts too. He says all that, and you're standing there thinking to yourself, all I said was, how are you doing? I didn't really mean, how are you doing? Now, I'm not sure I needed to know all that, but thank you anyhow. Well, the reality of it is, you never know what a student is going to say. On the other hand, some students don't verbalize all of those struggles, and instead, they express what's going on through their wild behavior. In fact, this is often the case in youth ministry. 
especially with younger students. Well, when they do this, us youth workers, we might only see the symptoms of a much larger problem. And it's so easy to become frustrated with a student who won't listen, participate, or behave. I can't count the number of times I've thought, well, that kid is for sure going to hell and there's nothing I can do about it. And I was saying that to justify moving on to minister to other students who don't need excessive medication to make it through an hour of youth group. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding kind of. Well, deeper discernment requires us to get to the root cause of the behavioral disease. I'm not suggesting that you ignore symptomatic behavior. If a student shows up to your small group drunk, deal with the drunkenness, but realize that underneath that, there's a deeper need that needs a much greater response. Even drunkenness is just a symptom of what's going on in the student's life. Now, for some of us, having discernment in these moments feels like being thrown into an NFL game. You're the quarterback, and it's all happening so fast. It feels like we don't know what to do, and it's over before we know what happened. We don't have all the answers, but there's a way to prepare before moments like this happen. Well, now there's no one way to respond to all needs in all situations, but let me try to help you by giving you a short acrostic that I've relied on for years. If you can remember the word life, L-I-F-E, these four actions will come in handy. The L in the word life stands for listen. Listen slowly. Listen beneath and beyond the spoken word. What do you think the student is trying to communicate that they're not saying? If you tend to have a personality that doesn't respond well to having your authority challenge, this is especially difficult. One of my favorite things about Jesus was how he moved past what the person said to really what the person needed. So what do your students really need? So many adults in the lives of our students are just too busy. They're too preoccupied and their eyes are down buried in a smartphone. And I'm guilty of it at times, even with my own children, so I understand. But what would it look like if you, as a youth worker, really gave your time, your eyes, and your ears to to a student this week? What would it look like if you were to really listen? The I in life is invite. Invite them to talk about it. Invite them to, to talk about it by asking clarifying questions. Ask for more detail. Ask open ended questions and reflect their answers back to them. Invite them to sit down at Starbucks and talk to you about it, or offer to grab a burrito at Taco Bell, uh, maybe after youth group, and go a little deeper with them and the problems they're facing. Sometimes teenagers are just looking for an opportunity to talk, and to talk to someone who will listen. The F in life is focus. Be careful with the distractions around you. People, activities, noise, we can all be easily distracted. If it's shiny, I'm looking at it. And it's, I want you to know it's important to make good eye contact and really focus on the student that's in need. Also, focus on their need rather than thinking about your own agenda or trying to quickly fix them so you can go on with the program or move out of the situation. And finally, the E in life stands for embrace. Embrace them as a person. Let them see that you're not running away from their problem or drama or insecurity or sin. Let them see that you're not scared of what they're telling you. In fact, oftentimes they might just be testing you. They may be launching verbal flares to see if you're still there or if you'll be shocked by their sin and run away. So listen, invite, focus, and embrace. Do life with your students, and you'll be an effective youth worker. I want my volunteers to be equipped to call audibles and make strong plays with these simple actions. Friends, don't overlook the power of these divine appointments in youth ministry. The next time someone dumps on you after you ask a simple, how are you doing, or you see terrible behavior at church, Remember that there's a genuine opportunity for us to dive deeply into their heart, an opportunity for God's Spirit to work, sometimes simple discernment and sometimes much deeper discernment. Now, God uses sermons and prayer, camps, events, missions, trips, all of that to change kids' lives, but God also uses those unexpected interactions. I believe you can infuse some life into your youth ministry. I challenge you to think about those four words this week. And take time to listen, invite, focus, and embrace. My prayer is that you would develop strong discernment skills 
So you would recognize these divine appointments. You'd last longer in youth ministry, and you'd be more effective with the students that God has entrusted to your care. Thanks for taking the time to listen, watch, and learn. <music>